So if Charles alive. Whitman, for example, and it could be possible that he killed 16 people because he had a brain tumor that made him aggression. Yeah, that right, okay, be, so he is, he is, you would not hold him responsible for what he did because he's, he's I mean, he had no... Right, right. Yeah, and I would say that in the case but of he, Charles yeah, Whitman... But yeah, he has to be kept... He has oh, to be I, don't, I don't know. Oh, sure. Oh, look, lots of, yeah. lots of people are dangerous. Lots of people are dangerous. I don't know. That, I don't agree that I wouldn't hold him responsible. I don't know exactly what the effect of the brain tumor is. If the brain tumor makes him think that he's not really killing anyone, then I wouldn't hold him responsible. Yes. But if the brain tumor gives him a, a strong desire to kill people, then I hold him responsible. That he can't overcome. Well, uh... What if you could remove the brain tumor? What? What if you could remove the brain tumor? Would you still hold him responsible afterward? I yeah, mean, then he's a different person. I don't know. That's the, the question is, could he? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's all the could piece, right? That's where it's all hiding. I, mean, right. I, I think so, that we have a better theory of Charles Whitman than a freely operating thing, right? I mean, you know, the theory that he'll go kill people is better than one that he's making rational decisions. Based well, on my, I mean, my feeling uh, is, Senator Armstrong ha has a, a, a detailed case of someone who was a repeated sex offender yeah. and who was diagnosed as having a, a tumor that was impressing a certain part of the brain. When it was removed, he ceased entirely to behave in this inappropriate way towards his daughter. Uh, he was subsequently released from jail. The tumor regrew back, and as it grew back, his behavior returned to its previously uh, indictable uh, pattern. And again, on the removal of the tumor, his behavior returned to normal. So there's now, what, what, what does one make of this from the perspective of retributive punishment? Well, yeah. I'm puzzled by the question uh, that Sean asked, which you're also asking. Um, if the tumor is out, uh, he's, is he the same person that did He crime? himself actually had a first-person account of the entire train of events, which made it clear that from the first person, he thought of himself as numerically identical over the repeated interventions, the criminality, the trials, and the ultimate cure. Did he say why he did the foul deeds when he, he said, had the I tumor in? I had an in? overwhelming desire to well. do these deeds. And of course, he knew nothing about his, his brain tumor initially. And the subsequent overwhelming desires came upon him in ways that did not reveal that they were caused by the recurrence of the brain tumor, but which his physicians were able to diagnose. But you see, that's key. I think when the question of the responsibility of this man comes mm -hmm. up, the question is whether he had evidence for the recurrence. Was there a time when he should have known that, that he his was behavior becoming alone. disabled? And then we can say he's responsible for not having taken the steps. If somebody commits a crime, you would need to discuss whether or not there's mens rea volition. I like the volitional word better. Whether or not there really is volition or free will, we can't have society without having that construct. So I think we've got to have that. So you've got to determine whether or not there was criminal intent. You could make out, you're making up cases that are very much on the line. I think it's pretty irrelevant. Those are very unusual and special cases. And the idea of convicting somebody is for several purposes, in my view. One is deterrence. You want to keep people from committing a crime again. Another is removing people from society who, in fact, are, are, are non-rehabilitatable. Uh, I think the goal needs to be rehabilitation. If you guys really want to punish people and take their fingernails off because you're mad at them, I want to put that aside. I personally don't subscribe to that. I also think that this level of of uh, responsibility extends to 11-year-olds. If an 11-year-old commits a crime, you also need to determine these same things. You need to deter that behavior. You may do it differently. You need to remove them from, from society, potentially, and you try to rehabilitate them. Um, so, I, and, and by the way, if it turns out that they're not, uh, they didn't have criminal intent, but they might kill again, you have to lock them up by reason of insanity, which has the same kinds of purposes as in fact locking them up for, for the, for because they had volition. And finally, of course, there's negligence, which has another set of, of potential. So if you say, well, they didn't mean it, but they did something bad because they were stupid, there's civil law that deals with that. So I want to kind of remove all these legal questions, which frankly, I've heard a lot of very muddy approaches to. That's my view on the legal side.